Welcome, Professor Rich RN here. Today we're going to talk about subcutaneous injections and the sites that we're going to use for those. So subcutaneous, we shorten that up abbreviation by calling it SQ or sub Q. So there's different syringes sizes that we're going to use for this. So if it is going to be, let's say, heparin, we're going to use a syringe that has a diameter of 25 to 27 gauge. And again, the diameter of this, the, the smaller the number, the larger the needle actually is. So the 25 is actually larger than the 27 gauge. The needle length is going to be 3 eighths to 5 eighths of an inch. And then when we're doing the injection, it can be anywhere from 45 to 90 degrees. That just depends on the nurse's preference. Insulin syringes, slightly different. They're going to be a little smaller on the back end there. So the diameter can be 25 to 31 gauge. The needle length can be five to 16 to one and a half inch. And then the angle again is going to be very similar though. It's going to be 45 to 90 degree angle. So what do we need to know as a nurse when we're going to be giving these subcutaneous shots or injections? We want to grasp the area if an area that we have chosen does not have as much subcutaneous tissue. Oftentimes, you're going to see someone give this injection in the abdomen, as you can see in the, the background on the video here, because the abdomen has a lot of subcutaneous tissue. 45 degree angle, smaller needle for massive, a macetated or decreased sub-Q tissue. Um, so you're going to pick the needle's length and the angle of injection so the med is not injected too deeply and or into the muscle. So if the patient doesn't have a lot of subcutaneous tissue, then we can inject it at that 45 degree um, angle. So the medication is not going to go into the muscle. If the patient, for example, um, has a lot of adipose tissue, a lot of fat in that abdomen, we can go ahead and choose a little longer needle and we can inject it at a 90 degree angle because we're not worried so much about it going into the muscular area because of all that extra subcutaneous tissue the patient has. Okay, here on the video here, you can see the different subcutaneous sites. So we have the back of the arms. Okay, it's a very common one to give insulin there. Um, you also have the upper thighs as well. And then the abdomen is also a very common site. Um, you're typically going to give heparin and Lovenox, the blood thinners in, in the abdomen area. You can also give insulin as there as well. And then the upper arms typically is where we'll give insulin. You want to make sure that you're going to rotate these sites, meaning if you gave insulin in the right upper arm um, at breakfast, then at lunch, you want to go ahead and rotate that to the left upper arm. Um, again, rotating sites with the different um, times. More in depth about the site. So our abdomen is the fastest absorption um, because it has the most fat there. And as you can see, the person's injecting themselves on the video right now. The lateral aspect of the upper arm is going to be your second fast absorption. Um, it can be used in small children with little subcutaneous fat. It's important to note that absorption can be affected by exercise. Because if you think about it, you're exercising, there's going to be increased blood flow. And so therefore, the, the absorption rate can change. Anterior or lateral thigh is going to be a slow um, absorption of long-acting insulin, such as our Lantus. Buttocks is going to be your slowest absorption, but it can be used in smaller children. Heparin or anoxaparin, this is an anticoagulant or blood thinner. Um, its abdomen is going to be the recommended spot for uh, the administration of these. Lovenox is low molecular rate heparin. It's going to be administered two inches to the left or the right of the umbilicus or your belly button. Before you administer these medications, it's important to check your coagulation studies as well as platelets. Specifically, in when we're talking about Lovenox, which you can see on the video, it comes in a pre-filled syringe. And... It, with the yellow part being the plunger and its own cap. The manufacturer instructs us to continue to grasp the tissue while injecting the medication. The Lovenox is unique because it, it comes in a pre-filled syringe already, as I mentioned. And within this pre-filled syringe, it has an air bubble. Any other thing we're dealing with in nursing with an air bubble, injections, IV, whatever it is, we always get rid of that air bubble. Um, but Lovenox is essentially the one thing where that air bubble 
is meant to be in that package. It's And so we do not expel that air bubble before we administer. Uh, the reason why that air bubble is in present is because the manufacturer states that that air bubble after injection will help expel all that medication and that syringe into the patient. So that air bubble is meant to be there and should be should not be expelled before administration of the medication. It's going to help get all that medication into the patient when we're administering this medication. So these are two different types of syringes um, for sub, sub Q injections. Uh, on one side, you have an orange cap. Okay, the orange cap typically signifies insulin. The one thing that's different about insulin syringes is it is made up of units. Okay, not milliliters, but units. Okay. Um, so as you can see, uh, the orange syringe there goes up to 50 units. If we're looking at the TV syringe, which are typically a gray cap, but also can be in brown, these ones are in the form of a milliliter. So it can be one milliliter in that syringe. Again, insulin is in the, in the units, and then the TV syringes are in milliliters. It's important to know the difference of those. Well, that's it for today on the sub-Q injections. Feel free to watch my other videos on intradermal injections as well as IM injections. Hope you have a wonderful day.